peeing on John Harvard's foot. And we run around completely naked. Sex in the stacks. Namaste everyone, this is Avanti. And today we're going to talk about some weird Harvard traditions. I briefly mentioned this in one of my other videos, but I'm making an expansive one today. So there are four unofficial traditions that you have to do to graduate. Of course, they're not real. I graduated without doing all four, but it's, you know, one of those things that the community shares and it's like a little community thing. So here they go. And I, disclaimer, have done one of them, but I'm not going to tell you which one I did. You can feel free to guess as much as you'd like in the comments below. I will obviously love the people who guessed the one I did more. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> Feel free to guess. I'm going to pretend like I did or didn't do all of them, so we shall see. Anyway, moving on, these are the four traditions. Tradition number one is called Primal Scream. This is a bizarre one, but the night before every final exam, students collect in the middle of Harvard Yard, which is the main area that houses all the academic buildings, and they run around completely naked. Now this happens before both the sets of exams, the ones that happen in December and the ones that happen in May. You can imagine that it's much easier to do it in May because of the weather, but in December it is freezing, it is so cold. But people still do it, and it kind of feels like people are running in a naked mass of flesh. You might be wondering, wait, is it like completely naked, partially naked, wearing underwear? Honestly, if you wear underwear, you stand out because you're one of the only people wearing underwear. So most people just, they go for it. They go bare naked and they go for it. And everyone runs together. And it's a thing that you do with your friends. Most people do it once as something that they want to do to graduate. But there's some people who like doing it every single time, you know, whatever floats your boat. So yeah, it happens at midnight, the night before finals. And there's just basically a bunch of people running around make it in the yard. So yeah. <laughs> Tradition number two is what is called sex in the stacks. So the stacks refers to Widener Library. Widener Library is this beautiful, gorgeous library. It's one of the world's, I believe, largest libraries. And there is these marble steps and it's gorgeous. The idea is for you to go down to the stacks, which is the lower levels of that library, let me tell you this, that area of the library is so quiet. If you drop a pin, you will hear it. It's so quiet. But the point is for you to go there and have sex. Obviously sex is not a quiet activity, so it's going to be a little noisy. So the point is that you do it without getting caught. Um, in the first case, in Primal Scream, everybody knows about it, so there is no worry about being caught. But in the second one, there is a little bit of a worry about being caught by the guards or by somebody else. So it's a little risque for multiple reasons, but it's all about finding the right place. Oh, the other thing about this library is everywhere you walk, this happens in most buildings in Harvard, but everywhere you walk, there are these uh, automatic lights that turn on based on sensor. So if you walk through a hallway, the lights are going to turn on. So yeah, you just got to be very careful doing that second one. And it's it's more like a matter of many kia, you know, I've done it than really anything else because uh, that one's a little hard to prove, you know, with Primal Scream you can prove it by other people seeing you there with this one. A little harder to prove, but you know, you can still do it all the same. Tradition number three is peeing on John Harvard's foot. Let me explain. So in the middle of Harvard Yard, there is the statue of John Harvard, who is supposed to be the founder of Harvard. Fun fact, that statue is actually not a statue of John Harvard. Nobody knows what John Harvard looked like. The statue of this random man named Sherman, but we all believe that it's John Harvard, so that's a whole other thing. And what happens is whenever tourists come and visit, they come walk by and they all rub the shoe for good luck. Now, if you see this picture off John Harvard, you will notice that one of his shoes is super shiny. I'm super golden. No, it is not the people touching it. That does contribute to that. 
But what contributes even more to that is the ammonia from your pee. And yes, you can also get caught for this one and potentially get into trouble. So most people do it in the dead of night. And again, this one's also a little bit hard to prove, but it's not that hard to climb up onto this thing. So people climb up, they often do it with friends. Obviously way easier for guys to do it, you know, because they can stand and do it for women. It's a little bit harder, but it is possible. So if you're ever visiting, please, for God's sake, do not touch that foot, because in addition to the fact that several hundreds of thousands of people have touched it and you don't know what germs they have, especially during Corona, um, there is also pee on that foot almost every night. So <laughs> be careful. The fourth weird tradition is a fairly new one. The first three are the OG, but the fourth one is a little bit newer and you have to jump off of Weeks Bridge into the water. So the water body that I'm referring to here is the Charles River. If you've seen any of the films about Harvard or about Boston, you would have seen this river. It's called the Charles River. It's beautiful. That's where the rowing team practices. There's a lot of, you know, water things that happen there. And the point of this tradition is to be daring. So you jump off a of Weeks Bridge. It's not that high and it's not that dangerous but it definitely can be, so you just have to be careful and it depends on how much you want to risk injury. And people jump off the bridge into the water. Again, it's way easier to do towards the spring and summer months. In the dead of winter, it is freezing. And in fact, the river itself is frozen, so it's just be careful if you decide to do this one. And uh, the way in which people do it is they just Often do it with friends, they'll all hold hands and jump off into the water together or somebody will film them. But it's meant to be one of those things that's just more of a thrill-seeking experience. That's the fourth weird tradition. There's another tradition that has nothing to do with graduation, unofficially, but that is still unique to Harvard and I believe Yale also does something similar. And it's a tradition called housing day. So basically, when you are a freshman, you come, it's mandatory, compulsory to live in the dorms for the first year, and then you can move off campus after that, but most people stay on campus because they guarantee housing. So you move into what is known as a house. The purpose of this house is basically to be a community that's a subset of the larger community, and you get sorted into the house. It feels kind of like Hogwarts, honestly, where you get sorted by this random algorithm. So you choose anywhere between one and seven people to live with. So it's a group of, you know, you as a single person or eight people. And that is called your blocking group. So I had a blocking group of eight people. And uh, you are then randomly assigned into a house. The way it happens though is not that you just receive, oh, you have been assigned XYZ house. What happens is there is a day called housing day. And that morning at 3 a.m., people who are participating, the upperclassmen from all the other houses, will go pick up the letters, pick up the dorms that they have to go to, and they'll go rush the dorms. So what that means is they'll go run into these dorms and tell the lucky freshmen what house they're in. They will paint their faces, wear their house garb, because each house has a different t-shirt, logo, colors, things like that. And each house, by the way, has you know its own dining hall, things like that, so it does feel like a small community. And they'll go crazy, you know? Sometimes they'll storm the dining halls, Sometimes they will um, just come run around and do fake things. My locking group, we were actually one of the last people to find out. It's a two hour exercise and we were toward the end of the two hours. And uh, some of the people in my group really, really, really did not want to be in some particular houses. So when we got rushed by that point, because we were one of the last people, there were literally 25 people who came into my friend's room. He was knocked over, everybody else was knocked over and uh, they just rushed all in. And my blockmates, meaning the friends who were in this group, started crying because they were just so happy, you know, that they didn't get the bad house, well, not the bad house, but the one they didn't want. And um, it's one of those things that it just feels like a rush of adrenaline, joy. Usually right after that, once you've gotten your housing assignment, you are welcomed into the house and there is a welcome feast. You can get some swag, meaning, you know, uh, paraphernalia and all of that. And then they have a dinner. Sometimes people the night before also if you're into that, it's not really my vibe, but if you're into that, they, people go drinking across all the houses and try to understand, um, to guess which house they might be in. So it's, it's, it's just fun and festivities. For me, actually, I um, 
I was there when we got the house assignment, but I was actually leaving on a flight to India a few hours later, so I wasn't able to be a part of all the welcome feasts and all the you know other activities. But I saw pictures from my blocking mates, and it looked really really fun. So yeah, that's another fun tradition. And another one that I'd like to talk about since we've talked about houses is each house has their own special tradition. So I was in a house called Adam's House, and some of the traditions. Also my hair. <laughs> some of the traditions that we had were really interesting. So every Thursday we'd have this night called Carpe, as in, you know, Carpe Diem sees the day, Carpe just meant sees. And uh, every Thursday night there would be pizza, food, drinks, a bunch of different things, and they would have different themes. So sometimes you could perform, I'd perform at a few Carpes, sometimes there's just people hanging out and just gathering and having, you know, a community gathering at 10 p.m. basically on a Thursday night. Again, I wish I'd been able to go to more of them. I've only been to a few. I was always traveling for shows and things, but it was really fun, really fun tradition. And you know, you feel like you are part of that community. Another tradition at Adam's house is something called drag night, which is, there's one night a year where everybody dresses up in drag costume. So, you know, whatever gender you identify as, male, female, blah, 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 you can dress up in drag garb and you perform. And it's really cool to see people come out of their comfort zones and put on a show, um, so it's fun. And the third big tradition at Adams is the winter feast. So this is right before winter break when you go home. And what happens during winter feast is there's a beautiful feast, often some performances I would perform at winter feast every year. There would be a special reading of Winnie the Pooh and our faculty deans, so in our case we had a lovely couple who were our faculty deans, will take on the roles, but they'll often take on really funny roles, so they'll take on the roles of like Pooh or Roo or these things, and it's really cute that you'll have people, you know, from the house, whether it's people in the administration there, there's the dining hall stuff, and it just feels like everyone comes together and they'll do a little meeting and then after that there'll be caroling. So those are some of the traditions that I really cherished and I really enjoyed, but they are a little weird. Um, the weirdest ones are definitely the unofficial graduation ones. So I will let you guess which one I did. Um, okay, let's 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 increase the stakes here. If this video gets three thousand likes, three thousand, I will reveal which one I did. So if you want to know. Please like this video. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you want more fun tidbits like this or anything else, feel free to let me know as always in the comments below. And send you all so much love and have a good day. Bye.